I want to provoke you for a few minutes. I'd like you to think about this question. When the devil looks at you, what does he see? Does he see an easy target? Does he see someone who is spiritually vulnerable to attack? Does he see someone who is lost? Someone discouraged and ready to give in? You have to understand that nothing is hidden in the spiritual realm. Let me give you an example. In Acts chapter 19, the Bible tells us that God was performing extraordinary miracles through Paul. And these were really amazing miracles. So strong was God's anointing on Paul that the Bible says even handkerchiefs or aprons that had touched his skin were carried away to the sick and their diseases left them and the evil spirits came out of them. Now in Acts chapter 19, verse 13 to 16, it says, some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon possessed. They would say, in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. One day, the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I know about, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. Read verse 15 once again. The Bible says one day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I know about, but who are you? The demon knew who Jesus was. It saw his authority. It saw the boldness Jesus spoke with, and it definitely saw God's power in Jesus. Now what's interesting is, the demon knew who Paul was also. The demon saw the anointing that was on Paul. It saw the presence of God that moved with Paul and caused those extraordinary miracles to happen. But now, all of a sudden, these seven sons of Sceva came on the scene. They saw what Jesus did. They saw what Paul did. They saw the miracles that God performed through Paul. They saw it and they wanted it. They wanted to be involved and get into the action. And before I go any further, let me tell you that you should never, never envy someone else's gift. Never look at the anointing that's on someone else's life and wish it was yours. Because for one, you don't know the price they paid. You don't know how many hours they've spent in prayer seeking the face of Jesus. You don't know what they've had to leave behind and sacrifice in order to answer the call of God. But these seven sons of Sceva didn't know that there is a price to be paid for being anointed. They didn't know that in order for you to cast demons out, your relationship with the Lord had to be deeper than just your words. It had to be your lifestyle. It had to be your center, your all, your very being. So these seven men tried to cast out demons by imitating the anointing. They tried to rebuke demons by imitating the power of God that they saw on Paul. And Acts chapter 19 verse 16 says, Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. The demons saw right through them. The demons saw that these seven men were all talk but no substance. The demons saw through the physical act and said, hold on a minute. These people don't practice what they preach. In the spirit, these people have no authority. They don't have a hedge of fire around them. They don't have a serious prayer life. These guys are no match for us. 
And I, for one, found it unbelievable that the Bible said the evil spirit jumped on them, overpowered them, gave them a beating, and that beating left them naked and bleeding. It's a lesson for us all. Demons can see whether or not you are truly connected to God or if you're an imposter. Demons can see whether the anointing on your life is authentic and from the Lord or if it's imitation. They can tell if you are a man or a woman of God who is spirit-filled or if you are a man or a woman who is a counterfeit Christian. Saints, it's up to us whether or not we decide to tap into the anointing, the gifts and power that God has given us. So I'll ask you this question once again. When the devil looks at you, what does he see? Does he see a Christian man or woman who has an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ? Does he see a man or woman who is lukewarm or one who is truly burning with a love and passion for the things of God? The amount of effort and time you put into developing a relationship with Jesus Christ is there for all to see in the spirit world. Make sure you are living a life of substance and not some form of counterfeit Christianity. There is a danger in professing the name of Jesus Christ in public but yet you have no personal relationship with him. It's dangerous to walk around with a form of godliness when beneath the surface you are living a life that is not connected to Jesus Christ at all. If we're not careful, we can become susceptible to Satan's attacks without even realizing it. 1 Peter 5 verse 8 says, Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Satan preys upon those who are on shaky soil in their walk with God. He preys on those who have a false pretense, those who act like their Holy Ghost feel but really aren't. The devil goes after the weak-minded, the undisciplined, the lukewarm believer. Don't let that become you. He goes after the one with no self-control, the one who has one foot in and one foot out. Don't let that become you. Instead, remain vigilant. Arm yourself for battle. Don't be caught unaware. When temptation comes your way, fix your eyes on what is right and true. When the devil looks at you, let him see a man or woman who is committed to Jesus. When you abide in the shadow of the Almighty, there is nothing Satan can do to pry us from his hands. When the devil looks at you, let him see no door for entry. Let him see no opportunity to exploit. We all have weaknesses, but we have to hand them over to God instead of letting the devil get a foothold in our lives. When the devil looks at you, let him see the full armor of God. Stand firm in the truth of the gospel, so that when lies start shooting like arrows from the devil's mouth, they have no effect on you. When the devil looks at you, let him see a child of God. We have a heavenly father, who has already claimed us. And he is always surrounding us with his divine protection. If the devil looks at you and sees these things, he's rendered powerless. He's rendered useless. The Bible says that if we resist the devil, he will flee from us. Temptation may be strong, but the one who lives within us is stronger. And when all is said and done, we know who will ultimately win, and it is Jesus Christ. The end is already written. It's up to you and I to decide. Decide if you will be a victor 
or a victim? Will you be overwhelmed or an overcomer? So let the devil know that you are a child of God who is sanctified, justified, and protected by the blood of Jesus Christ. Make it abundantly clear that you are no longer his for the taking. Your heart has changed. Your allegiance has changed. Your mind has been transformed and renewed. So when the devil looks at you, don't let him see the weakness of your flesh. Instead, let him see the power of the Holy Spirit living within you. Let him see the image of the cross stamped on your heart, sealing you for all eternity.